Hello everybody, my name is Julian and in today's workshop we will be going through the basics of creating a very simple game in Unity. And what's more simple than Pong, right? It's really simple, you've got two paddles, you've got a ball that bounces across walls, and the goal of the game is to get the ball on the other player's goal um, to score a point. So let's real quick run through the basics of what that means for us. We have two paddles, we have a ball, we have two walls, and if I can do, and we have a scoring system. So let's hop over into Unity. I've already created a 2D project for us to work in uh, with a basic empty scene with just the main camera. To get started with working on our paddles, we'll need an art asset. So we can do that by going into the project window, right clicking, going to create and sprites, square. And that'll just give us a square um, sprite, the, which we can drag over into the hierarchy window. Um, and now we have our paddle game object created for us. And we can scale it like so. Basic paddle size. We'll hop over to our game window to see if it looks good. Um, we're good. Um, and now we can go ahead and at attach our components to it. So first thing we want to do is handle our collision. So we'll add a box collider 2D. Um, so basically Unity will handle collision. Whenever the ball hits it, it will uh, respond appropriately. Um, and we'll also want to be able to control the velocity of the paddle so we can move it up and down. Um, so we'll go ahead and attach a rigid body, a rigid body 2D. And this will basically handle the physics for us. If we hop into the play mode, um, we'll notice, the first thing we'll notice is that the paddle will immediately fall to the ground. That is not what we want. Since this is a top-down view, we want to turn off gravity. So we'll go ahead and set the gravity scale to zero. Um, we al I also know that whenever the ball hits the paddle, it will force the paddle to rotate, like so. So we can go down to rigid body constraints and freeze our rotation. And we also want to limit our X position so that the player can only move the paddle up and down. And it also that the ball cannot hit the paddle and keep bouncing it backwards. It's also unwanted behavior. So now we go back to play mode. Nothing much will happen. You'll notice that the, the paddle doesn't move, um, which is good. So now we can, add, we can start adding our movement script to it. So we go over to add component, new script, and we'll call it Paddle movement. I'll double click it and we'll hop into our text editor, our IDE. For, for me, it would be Visual Studio. I'll go ahead and wait for it to load. So the first thing we want to keep track of when in our paddle script is whether or not this current paddle is player one. So we just create a new boolean and just call it is player one. And we'll just set that true to true, if I can type. Uh, we also want to keep track of the speed, which is how fast the player can move the paddle up and down. Um, so create a public float, call it speed, and we'll just set that to 3F for now. It's also a good practice to explicitly define your uh, values. So F just basically means this is a float. If it didn't have the F there, then this three would be considered to be a, do uh, a double. Um, and now in our update method, we want to get the uh, player's input. We can do this um, a number of different ways. We can hard code the input by saying, Input dot get key uh, and key code dot w, 
And this will basically give us whether or not the player has pressed the W key. Uh, but it's generally best practice to use Unity's um, key bindings. Um, um, in this case, we'll be using the, uh, the axes. So um, we could basically have up and down, left and right, the horizontal and vertical axes. And we can get values from that, like so. Input dot get axis. So I know their Unity's um, called an axis. It has an axis called vertical. And this will basically get how f how far you um, how far into the vertical axis the players. Um, hit the button or hit a joystick. Um, in our case, uh, since it's just a button, we're using keyboard input. Um, it'll be, this value would be either zero or one or negative one. Um, and we want to take this information and put it back into uh, the paddle's rigid body. So first we'll have to Get that. Uh, get a reference to the uh, rigid body, like so. We'll set a um, create a private variable uh, rigid body 2D and call it RB. And in the start method, we'll set the reference to get component uh, of type rigid body 2D. Now this basically tells Unity to get the a component attached to the current game object um, of type 2D. It will just get the first component that it finds of that type. If none is attached, then this will return null. But since we know that we've already attached the rigid body, well, this should be fine. And now in our update method, we can simply say that um, our rigid bodies velocity is equal to vector two dot up times the input axis times our speed. And so if we go ahead, save it, hop over into Unity, let it compile down here in the left, bottom right. and then hop into play mode. Sometimes takes a bit. And now we hit up and down. We had noticed that the paddle moves like so. But you'll notice that this also, this doesn't tell us which, um, as it isn't limited for um, just player one. So we'll want to We'll want to first go ahead and say if is player one, then we want to set the velocity. Otherwise, we don't care. Otherwise, we want to set it for um, the, we'll want to use the input for player two. Um, so you'll notice um, this uh, input um, access thing, it's set for player one. So, like, if we go over into Unity and we go to Edit, Project Settings, Input, we can see that the axis defined as vertical is bound to the W and S keys. Now this is only defined for player one. If we wanted to have an axis defined for player two, we change the size of the, the key bindings we uh, want to find and go down here and create a new axis called vertical two for player two and have it bound to the down and up keys. That way in our script, we can say pretty much the exact same piece of code, but instead of using the player one's vertical axis, we'll use player two's axis. And we can save it, hop over into Unity. Um, and now we can, uh, let's make this a prefab and copy it over. 
to make a uh, player choose paddle. And so we'll simply negate its X value. Um, and now we have our player twos controller and we'll say is player one set to false. Now we go into play. We can control both of the paddles separately. Awesome. Now the next thing we want to work on is the ball. So um, just like the paddle, I'll create a new asset, um, sprites, circle, and this will be our the sprite for the ball. And we'll notice it's too big, so I will scale it down a little bit. Hop over into game view. Looks decent. Um, and then we'll also create the collision data for the ball. So we'll go ahead and go into add component. Uh, we want a circle collider this time. And we also want a uh, rigid body for physics, rigid body 2D. Again, we want to turn the gravity scale to zero and freeze our rotation. Um, this will basically simplifies, simplify the physics calculation. Um, that way we don't have to worry about any rotational velocity as well. Um, and now we want to basically create a script that whenever we start the game, we have a direction assigned to us assigned to the ball, sorry. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go to add component um, and we'll just create a new script called ball motion. Sounds good. We'll hop over into our editor and we wanna keep track of a couple things here. Um, so obviously when it, we wanna keep track of the start speed. Um, and we'll go ahead and set that to five for now. Um, and we also want to keep track of the rigid body, just like the paddles. So we'll just create a private variable. And again, in the start method, I mean, we can simply copy this code over. And um, we also want to create a method where we can reset the ball to the center of the, the level, as well as assign a random direction to the ball. So we'll go to public, we'll create a, uh, a method called reset. And immediately we'll set the uh, ball's position to zero by going to transform dot position equals, actually we can simply say vector three dot zero since unity has already defined this for us. And now if we wanted to assign a random direction to it, we would say it's a little bit of uh, mass intensive. I won't go into exactly how this works, but just um, just roll with me. So we want a random direction, right? So we can use Unity's random range. Uh, not, uh, I believe that is the older version. We want the newer version, and we'll do a little something like this. And we'll set a random value for the y component of the vector as well. So random dot range. From negative one to one. And we also want to normalize this vector to get a unit vector and multiply it by the speed. Um, I'll just use start speed for now. And in our start method, we'll just call reset and hit save. 
hop over to Unity. And there we go. Our ball is given a random direction. So we'll also want to create walls for it to bounce off of. So basically, just use a square again. Uh, use a move tool, move it down just about there. Um, and we'll, slot, uh, we'll scale this up. Uh, there's good, I guess. Uh, we'll do this exact. And we'll also add collision. So a box collider 2D. And we'll also want to create a prefab. Well, first we'll name this wall. Create a prefab. And now we will move, invert the Y component. And now we go into play mode. We have something for our ball to bounce off of. And you'll notice that the ball is having too much physics applied to it. So how do we fix that? We want the ball to bounce off the walls. We don't want it to, you know, hit something and just keep moving in a direction. So what we can do is we can create a new physics material for the ball. Um, so we'll go into the project window, go to right click, uh, create, go down to physics material 2D. And we'll set these values, from, uh, which go from zero to one. We'll set the friction down to zero and the bounciness to one. So whenever it hits something, it bounces as much as possible and it doesn't lose any of its uh, uh, momentum. And so we can go over to the ball. Um, and I just realized it's still called circle. And right in its uh, circle collider, we'll attach the physics material to both um, it in the rigid body. And now we go back into play mode. We'll notice now that the ball bounces properly, but it just keeps going on forever. So we'll need to create our goals now. Um, so what we can do is just go into our hierarchy window, right click, create an empty object. It created a child of the ball, which we don't want. We'll just call it goal for now. Um, we'll add a box collider for this. So basically, whenever the ball is colliding with the goal, we can figure out the, we can use a, a event trigger to know, um, uh, to basically reset the ball. Um, so what we'll do is go into the box collider and, and call it, make it a trigger so it doesn't have any uh, physics attached to it. If this was not set, it'll basically, um, it'll basically act like another wall. Um, so we'll move this over to the left and scale it up and a little bit out. Uh, let's move it a little bit back so the player has some time to react to losing. <laughs> um, and we'll also want to add a new script and we'll call this script um, goal count. And so we'll want to keep track of a couple different things here. So we want to keep track of the score and we'll also want to keep track of which opponent um, um, this goal is for. So we'll go and say public string um, opponent name. If I can spell equals, by default, we'll just have it to player two for player one's goal. And we'll go ahead and create our collision um, trigger <laughs> method. So Unity has a method called um, onTriggerEnter2D, and this basically 
will get called every time an object enters the triggers collision box. Um, so we can basically just go ahead and say on um, trigger. It will help if I spell this properly. Enter 2D. And this takes a collider 2D and we'll just call it other. And first we want to tell what we're actually, uh, what is actually colliding with the goal. Um, and for now, we'll basically, we'll just keep track of it by, um, by tags. So you can tag multiple objects um, with basically anything. Um, but for now, I think we only need to concern ourselves with the tags of the ball. So we'll go ahead and change it to the player tag, even though it doesn't make sense. Unity has already created these tags for us. Um, and over here in the script, we'll go ahead and say if other.tag is equal to player, then we know we've collided with the ball, right? No, thank you, but no. <laughs> um, and so what we want to do here is increment our score. And for debug purposes, we'll simply say um, that our opponent has scored. And we'll just display its current score. I will also want to reset the ball from this point. So we'll go ahead and say other dot get component. And we want to reference to the ball motion. So we can go ahead and call it reset method. And voila. Go ahead and save that. Hop over into Unity hit play. Oh, before we do that, we want to create a prefab for this. We want to duplicate it, uh, negate its uh, X component. So we have player, uh, player two's goal on the other side. Um, Actually, I think I have this backwards. We want this guy to be player two's goal. So that means its opponent is player one. So now if we hit play, the ball should reset. And we see that player one now has um, point one. I think I've got that backwards. <laughs> so if we move that down, it should say player two. Yeah, we've got that backwards. So this guy should be player two and player one. Sorry about that. Um, and we also want to be able to see that from the uh, the screen, right? So now that we have the basics of the game working, we want to be able to track the score for each player. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do is go into our scene and create a UI element. And now we'll see there's two options here and Unity 2018. So, but um, we have Unity's default um, text UI element and we also have something called a text mesh pro text element. Um, I'll go ahead and hit the F key to, to get a good view on them. And you notice the difference between them is actually pretty, pretty um, obvious. Unity's basic um, text object has bare minimum, and you'll notice it is extremely blurry but a text mesh pro object is basically vectorized so that means it'll keep the it'll keep the same information with regardless to the scale um i personally like the text mesh pro better than the regular text because 
generally it is hard to read the generally hard to read Unity's basic text UI. So we'll go ahead and delete this text and we'll call this guy uh, score. And this will be the score text for player one. Let's just scroll out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. This is the bounds of our canvas, which basically means um, where we're drawing to the screen. Um, and actually UI is better done with the rect control. So let's just center it around here and we'll move it up a little bit. And we don't have to mess with any of these settings. It should be fine for now. Um, and let's go ahead and duplicate this guy. And again, invert his X component. So we have it for player two. Um, and now we wanna be able to set these, um, the text values of these UI elements whenever we make a goal. So we'll go over into our goal count script and we'll go ahead and add a new reference um, to our text element. Unfortunately though, we'll have to import a package. So we'll go ahead and go input TMP Pro for this. Um, if we were using the default, we would actually import our the Unity Engine's UI. So we have a reference to the text, um, the default text stuff that comes with Unity or Unity's extra feature they're called TMP Pro. Um, since we're using TMP Pro, we'll just stick to this reference. So I, I believe it is called a TextMess Pro UGUI. And that name's difficult to remember, but once you've got it, it's fine. Um, and we'll call this my text. And since it's a reference to an object, we want to, um, at the beginning, set its, uh, set the text equal to zero. And this will basically tell us that we don't have any score in the beginning. Um, it doesn't really matter what we set it to. We can set it to score since it is zero, but for now, we'll just keep it like that. Um, and down in the trigger, we want to set the text of my text um, equal to the uh, new score. And if you're not familiar with this, it's this is basically a quick way to convert a um, integer to a string. Um, and then we can go ahead and save this, hop over into Unity, um, wait for it to compile. Then we go to our goal, um, our goal game objects, and we will assign We'll assign the values for this. So, so this is player two's goal um, located on player one side. And we'll give him player two score. Um, and we'll do the opposite for player one. And now if we hit play, we should be able to see when we've scored. And there we go. That's Pong. Now, what if we want to make this look a little bit nicer? Now, there's a couple things that you can do. You can change the sprite assets. You can go over to like Paddle and change the sprite renders sprite to something, um, some sprite asset that you've made. But for now, the, the easiest thing for this demo, I feel like, is if we mess around with um, some of Unity's built-in features. So it'd be nice to be able to see the motion of the ball. So if we go ahead and create a 
empty child object for the ball. We'll just call this our effects. Effects. Um, and the first thing I want to do is create a trail renderer. And a trail renderer is basically, it basically just renders a trail. So if we go into play mode, we'll notice that we now have a line following our ball. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that it's pink and disgusting. <laughs> that means that the object is missing a material. So we'll go over here and, and assign the default material by giving it default line. Um, and now we've got a white line being drawn across the screen. That doesn't look too nice, so we'll go over here and go into our color. Um, I've already create, created a default pre, uh, preset gradient for us. So now we can see, um, oh, it's great that we're doing this in test mode. So now we just notice there that when the ball hits one of the, to the top of the paddle, it slowed down a bit. Um, well, we can fix that in a, in a second, but for now, let's focus on the trail render. Um, so let's go ahead and let's bring its size down a little bit. Um, and we'll also want to add a key here. This basically means that we can basically change the size of the trail along the lifetime. And it's also looking to be a bit too long. So let's shorten this down to about one. Uh, that's better. And I believe the rest of the settings should be fine. Um, so before we go out of play mode, um, we don't want to lose these changes. So we'll go ahead and copy the component, go in out of play mode, right click again and paste component values. So now we've got our changes back. Um, and now let's let's go back to the, the the ball motion and fix what we just noticed. So in our update method, we want to be able to set the, uh, keep the ball speed to, uh, or make sure it doesn't speed up or slow down more than we expect it to. So an update method, if the, uh, if the ball's velocity is greater, um, actually, if its magnitude is greater than our speed, then we want to change the velocity. Um, actually, the, uh, the unit vector of the velocity back to the speed. And of course, I've forgotten to actually set the velocity. And there we go. Now it stopped screaming at me. Um, and that should that should fix that bit. So the the ball will not slow down or speed up. Sorry, I've got this back. Yeah. Uh, actually, speed down or slow down. Uh, speed up or slow down. So now another thing that we can do to make this, uh, make the game a little bit more complicated is if whenever the ball bounces off this um, a surface, it speeds up a little bit. So it's really simple to add. We can add another, vari another variable called uh, another value for our speed. So this will keep track of our actual speed. And in reset, we can set the speed equal to our start speed. And we can add a another collision method for the ball. Um, I forget which one this is called. I believe it's called on collision enter. And it takes uh, a collision. Actually, we want the 2D version of this. Collision 2D. 
call it other. We don't need a reference to that. And basically what we'll do is we'll, we'll increment it by a value. And let's just create another variable. Um, we'll just make this one public, float, increment. And to be fair, we'll just simply set it to 0.4f about that. So it doesn't speed up by too much. And we won't be too getting too complicated. This increment will just be linear. We won't have it be exponential, which you can do um, if you want. But in this case, it'll just be linear. So we'll just increment the speed by the increment value. And instead of start speed here, we can use speed. And here as well. And go ahead and save that. Hop into Unity. Wait for it to compile and we should notice that whenever the ball hits something, it speeds up. 